Lady J in the building. It's right. Hey, 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 hey. what's going <laughs> on? Man, Listen, lady, rich, man. lady J, man, man, I, I'm, I'm so glad, uh, I'm I'm a little I'm a little honored too, but I'm I'm so glad that you uh, decided to come on to the podcast and uh, rock out with me. So thank you very much. You're welcome. It's been a long time coming. I'm definitely happy to be here to share this moment in time with you. Oh, why? Well, thank you, thank you. All right, so let me go ahead and get your story. Um, your 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 back in. Uh, what you was doing all right so there we go to see what you was doing before uh trucking and how's your journey so far well before trucking um i was a teacher um teaching wasn't necessarily my thing for a number number of reasons um and then i went into uh the fast food industry and left the fast food industry and got into trucking. Um, that's what happened in my latter years. But before then, um, I come from a truck driving family. Um, my grandfather started the legacy and it trickled on down to me. Um, <clears throat> so I pretty much been around trucks my whole life and had a dream of driving a truck. But you know how it is. Well, I don't know if you know how it is, but in the South, you know, um, back in them days, the the older people in my family was like trucking ain't a, a woman's job. You know, you should be a teacher or, or or a secretary or something of that nature. So that pushed me to go to college and um, get my degree in early childhood education. Now you now now schooling teacher like high school edu uh, or or elementary or this is like head start type deal. Um, it was a uh, primary school and elementary school. Now, you know, they, you know, coming from, you know, coming from a, a education background, can you please, please tell me why you teachers is, is not up on the, you know, up on the upper echelon is like sports figures and, and politicians and all like that. Because if it wasn't for y'all, we wouldn't even be where we at. Right. Exactly. That was one of my main things as um, far as making the decision to leave the school system was basically the pay. Um, twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 a year is not enough to, um, in today's society, to live um, comfortably, in, in my opinion. For some, it works, some it don't. But for me, it didn't. Um, and that was one of my biggest arguments. Like, no one would be where they are right now today if it wasn't for somebody teaching them. But we, you know, as teachers, always get the short end of the stick. Y'all sure do. Y'all get the short um, end. Y'all y'all get the short end of the stick and the bullshit that comes with it, man. Especially with it today. comes with it. Especially with today's kids. <sighs> right. You know. Um, but you know, a lot of times it doesn't, it really doesn't start with the child. It starts at home Always. and, um, yeah, you know, you get the parents that, that come and complain about their ch children not learning anything. And then, well, you ask, well, I sent stuff home for you to spend, you know, going over with your child or whatever. And that a lot of times that stuff come back in their folder undone mm -hmm. and, um, well, you you get the the saying. Well, you're the teacher. You you supposed to teach them and make sure that they learn. But I only get them for eight hours of the day. That's twenty four hours in a day. So the remaining of the time that you get them, you are their first teacher. Um, so you can't you can't put all of the blame on me when you know <laughs> you have them more time more time than I do. Um. Exactly. You, it it works unruly. both ways. It, it has to not only right. work at school, but it also got to work at home, too. But I, I do uh -huh. understand some of the home situations can be tough. But but yeah, it, uh -huh. it shouldn't be it, it shouldn't be all on the teacher, though. Right. 
And um, another thing was the curriculum. Um, in my opinion, that they they are teaching children to become great test takers as well as um, great nine to five workers. Um, they're not giving them the actual tools to go out here and really be successful. That's why uh, we have a very high turnover rate when it comes to college because they're not really taught how to budget money and how to keep their credit in good standing. So once they do um, achieve that college degree, um, they're not thousands and thousands of dollars in debt and um, multiple credit cards maxed out and all of that good type of thing. Um, and as a teacher, if you decide to go above and beyond yourself and do that type of thing, it is not counted as, um, work being done. Basically it's busy work. Um, if you're not staying on the curriculum, um, and also it's all about how many kids you can get to pass that standardized test. If you don't have a good percentage of your students pass that standardized testing, your job is at jeopardy. Lady J, I, 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 Lady J, yeah. uh, sorry for interrupting. Uh, go ahead and continue. I'll, I'll hold my thought. Go ahead and get your thought out. Oh, you you can go ahead. You can go ahead. Okay. I was going to ask you, how, how can you correlate that, what you just mentioned about uh, setting them up for failure? not setting them up for success. How do you correlate that with trucking? Well, with trucking, okay, so I don't know if you know or not, but I do have a nonprofit organization called A Driver's Drive for Kids. And um, basically what it is is every mile that I drive, I take part of that money and it goes towards um, teaching young children about the technical uh, technical degrees, basically trade. What we do as truck drivers is a trade, and um, it it decreases it decreases your debt out of school, and you'll go straight into the workforce um, upon completing, you know, your your skill or whatever. So, with that, um, my my saying to all the kids that I have mentored is. Don't get caught up in the hype of having to go to a four-year school. There are garbage men, plumbers, electricians, construction workers that make twice or if not three times as much as a four-year graduate. Um, and and I, I to, to drive the point, doctors, as a truck driver, um, you make more money than a doctor fresh out of uh doctors medical school so that's how i correlate that into um the trucking industry basically learning learning how to manage your money how to invest your money and um to expand business how did you uh how, how did you get into the industry like uh i mean coming from you know coming from the education and and going into fast food uh I, I don't see the correlation with trucks. <laughs> okay, so like I told you, I grew up around trucks. My mm -hmm. grandfather started uh, was the first black man in my county to drive an eighteen wheeler truck. He okay, had his own okay. setup, his own logging outfit, and um, <laughs> okay, bomb drop for your grandfather. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> So, um, you know, my uncles, they came in and started driving trucks. I have an aunt that has a class B and um, retired from the Department of Transportation where she uh, was a supervisor um, over road work or whatever, driving dump trucks and uh, the asphalt trucks and all that different type of paper machinery. Um, it, it was a dream of mine. Uh, we used to, I, I tell people a lot of times about when we were growing up, we used to play hide and seek inside and up under the uh, semi trucks when my uncles used to come home and, um, yeah, just, just hiding up under the, uh, hiding in the engine up under the, 
the hood or whatever, so nobody could find me until they figure out my uh my hiding spot, and not everybody want to take it. But that I I knew that I knew that that was a place that I could hide when they didn't. Um, so yeah, that's that's my correlation to truck driving. Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. So. Uh, being that your grandfather inspired you, so how how did you did did you go through traditional schooling or did you go through a company? And how long you been driving? By the I way? went through a company. I've been driving six years. Um, June fifteenth will be seven. Um, I went to a truck driving school. I started off at CR England, one of the lowest paying uh, trucking companies out here. Um, but do, the do. reason why. Do 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 we have a, do we have a good CR England story? Oh yes, I had a wonderful experience at CR England. I know a lot of people don't, and a lot of people don't say, "Well, I didn't." I I can't say CR England this, that, and the third. But I had a great experience. I um uh, I basically made the highest grade um on my driver's test, and straight out of school, I went to training. Of course, you know, over the road. And once, um, I, I, I think they do 180 hours. I completed the program at 160 hours. It would have been 140, but they wanted me to come back to, um, Atlanta to do my upgrade. And we were in Laredo or something like that. So nevertheless, after I got out of, once I upgraded or whatever, I went straight to a dedicated route. Most people that come out of, uh, after their trainer trucks go straight OTR, but I didn't. I went to a dedicated um, account, and me and my teammate, I was with a teammate that had 30 years of experience. Shout out to Thomas Perdue. Um, <laughs> he uh, basically taught me a whole lot, basically created a great driver out of me, um, made some great money doing it, and shoot, we stayed on the road. All the time. We only maybe did a 34, maybe one or two times at home. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, there's that. Um, In two years, I came off of the road and started driving containers, pulling containers at home. Okay. Okay. How how is it how how is it pulling uh, containers? How how is it different from pulling driving? (laughs) Well, the difference is. Um, you're home every day, off on the weekends, holidays. Um, you get that time off because it's uh, federal. Um, it's it's just a whole different different type of world in the container industry. Um, going in in and out of the ports, you get to see a side that you wouldn't see in dry van. Just you know, running from distribution center to distribution center. Um, that's that's pretty much all I can tell you. I mean, it, it's definitely a rat race. It's running hard and um, kind of kind of pushing yourself to the limit if if you if you can see it that way. Okay, okay, okay. So you 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 only spent two years with with CR England, right? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. you so you you fulfilled the contract. Did they did they reimburse you? Yeah. Well, no, they didn't reimburse me because of the simple fact of, um, I think it was like eight months. You spent eight months with them and your schooling was paid for. I never see them take it out of my paycheck or anything like that. So, yeah, I don't, I've never been reimbursed for schooling. Okay. 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 That's what's up. That's what's up. All right. So, Lady J, you, you had an issue recently and you, uh-huh. you had to come you uh-huh. had to come on and, and like be like, bruh, I don't care who you are. <laughs> talk to me <laughs> talk to me about uh about what happened on uh on TikTok, man. You uh you, <sighs> you I mean, you know, brother man, you know, I'm 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 familiar with him. You know what I'm saying? He uh-huh. got about he got about ninety four k thousand followers on face. I mean, not on Facebook, but on YouTube. And you know, he considered himself as the 
the god of trucking and everything. I'm just saying. But um, uh, but uh, he made a video. You commented on it. And he uh-huh. made a rebuttal video. And you came back and made your rebuttal video. What was what was the uh-huh. initial video that that you commented on? And why did you re- and why did you rebut it back to him? Okay, so the um, one day I was just scrolling, and it popped up on my for you page, and it was like, if you want to make more money, right? So I'm always searching for new information of how to expand and make more money, more uh, streams of income, and all of that different type of thing. Mm-hmm. So I clicked on it to listen to it. And he said that if you, uh, to make more money, you should only spend 10 hours in the sleeper. And he was like, like, like he had just dropped some bombs, um, <laughs> on everyone. And I was like, no, that, that doesn't necessarily equate. That doesn't work for everyone. And so he came back and was like, how so? And I was like, well, there's plenty of things that, um, play on that but I just mentioned a couple of things that he may would have known like weather or shipper and receiver times and all of that so he comes back with a video basically you know calling me all different types of names he's good for that calling me uh uh idiots and all of that he's good for that I mean if you're not from of course you're not familiar with him because you did mention it in your in your rebuttal video and and he's he's good for that he that's 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 basically what he's pretty much known for is his rants i mean he does he does give a little bit of sprinkles here and there but he's he's more known for his rants than anything else